going to go through the steps on how to take a regular light switch and change it to a motion activated switch. And we're doing a project here in the laundry room. And this is just a, a great switch if you have common areas where people leave the lights on and don't shut them off. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that we turn the electric off to the circuit. And I like a non-contact electrical tester. When you depress it, you know immediately by the sound and the light that it's working, the battery's working. And without having to touch live wires or get our hands close to live wires, we can tell whether the circuit's on. So I'll go turn off the breaker to the circuit and we'll go through the steps on how to change it. So I turned off the breaker and I'm just confirming that there's no electric and now I'll pull the old switch out. So I removed the two screws and pulled the switch out of the box and in this case we've got two wires going up to two different lights. We have a regular incandescent light and then we have a fluorescent group of lights and then we have the main power coming in from the service panel. And this is a single pole switch. It's one switch that goes up to a light or a group of lights. And you can tell because there's only two screw terminals plus a ground. And then we have on and off marked on the switch. So we know this is a single pole switch. And now we're going to disconnect this. And when you purchase your motion detector, you want to make sure that you get one that matches it. So it's either going to be a single pole switch or a three-way switch. In this case, we have a single pole switch and we have a ground wire, we have two hot wires, and a switch is just a break in the hot. So we have hot coming from the service panel and then going up to the lights, and then if you have white wires in the box, they're going to be twisted off with a wire connector. They're never connected to a switch. So I'm going to unscrew these two screw terminals, and the thing with a motion detector is we need to identify which wire is coming from the service panel and then which wire is going up to the light or group of lights. And in this case, I'm guessing which one goes where. But what we're going to do now is we're going to separate these wires, make sure they're not touching anything. We're going to turn the electric back on and then we're going to test each wire so that we can confirm which one is coming from the service panel. So the electric's back on and I turn on my tester, there's no electric here. So we can tell that this is the wire that's coming from the service panel. It's taking the power and then it's pushing it up to the lights with this. So on the dimmer, on the instructions, they want the black wire connected to the wire that's coming from the service panel and they want the red wire going to the wire that's going to the lights. They call that the load. So black wire from the service panel, the red wire to the load and a green wire if you had a ground in here. Now, we're in the Chicago area and we have all metal conduit. And so when we screw this in with metal screws, it's gonna be grounded to the box and then the metal pipe all the way back to the service panel. If you have a light switch with non-metallic cable, you're gonna have a green wire or a bare copper wire for your ground. And that's what you would attach to your green wire. So I turn the electricity back off and we can see that it's off. And now what I'm going to do, when you attach a wire to screw terminals, you always want to put a loop in it. Now that we're connecting to this dimmer, this dimmer has wire leads, and I'm going to straighten out the wires with a pair of linesman pliers, and I'm going to make them both about half inch long. And we'll just straighten them out. The dimmer switch came with wire connectors, and now we're going to attach the wire from the service panel to this black wire and whenever you're connecting solid wire to stranded wire I like to have the stranded wire about an eighth of an inch longer than the solid wire and when this pushes up into the top of the cap uh, these wire connectors with a little spring inside it's going to wrap itself deep in the very tip of that spring and it's going to lock itself together so We'll twist this wire here, and now I'm going to put the red wire on the load side going up to the lights, and you can see that this is a little bit longer. And the only uh, other thing that you want to know with a motion detector like this is how many watts it's rated for. And this one is rated for 500 watts, and you need to make sure that what you're drawing 
So in this case, we've got two 34-watt fluorescent bulbs and one 60-watt bulb. So it's going to fall within the limits of this. So now I'm just going to tuck the wires back into here, and then we'll screw it down. So I pushed in the wires and turned back on the electric. And you can see by a little bit of movement, now the light will go on by itself. And now I'll go through the steps on how to adjust the time and the sensitivity. So for this model, we have two settings. We have a time setting, and you just use a screwdriver, and you rotate this little control to plus or minus, and you can have it go from a minute all the way up to 15 minutes, and then it'll shut itself off. And then you also have sensitivity here, depending on the light levels, so you can make it more sensitive or less sensitive. So very easy to adjust, very easy to install, and just a, a nice device to save you money if you're in a common area.